So, I mean, I guess starting, the first step is to let the demo mode, I guess we can reset. Um, the first step for sure is to let demo mode start. So it takes about 16 seconds for the screen to loop into like the demo mode. But I think most people, I'm pretty sure I'll edit it in post if it's wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was Molly Man and Moo Mooney that discovered if you let this screen go into demo mode and you cancel out of it, it actually locks the RNG into place. So you always get the same boss fights and stuff like that. Um, this actually is really important because in RGL's old tutorial, this was not discovered yet. So that changes like a big part of kind of like the tutorial in general. Uh, second thing that you have to do is we pick Chip. Dale is just wrong. <laughs> I don't care what people say. So Sinister, you're watching this. Dale is trash. Andy, you watch this. Dale is trash. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Yeah, Chip, Chip is the way to go. So the first part is super easy. Um, there's like literally no hard platforming. You just jump on that pipe, you jump over that apple, you jump right here, jump over that guy, and we jump over this dog. This is all like basically intuitive. You just hold right and jump. So here we have our first climb. This is terrible. There's two ways that people kind of do this. Um, so the first way, like they each take 10 jumps. You can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess it's nine rather. And then the other one is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So maybe one's actually slightly faster. But the way that people either break it up is this is like 19 seconds into the run, so it's not that painful, and you're gonna risk that on bad climbs like once you get good anyway. But short jumping here is usually a source of death if you don't make it. So what some people do is they go like this and they long jump over to that box to make it a little bit safer, and then they vertically climb up that way. Um, but otherwise, the way that I always learned is I short jumped that way and then I climbed up that way. But I mean like either or is negligible. This is actually like a really big source of time loss. <clears throat> and these climbs, I still can't match them on the screen. Um, but that's kind of like the two ways that people do it. Is they either go up that way or they go up and they jump on that box. So whatever way you end up being more comfortable with, um, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, that, that's kind of like the way that most people do that section. And here it's worth noting that there is a difference between grabbing this box like that and like jumping into the corner of that box because it activates zippers slightly later. So if you jump into the corner or as close to the corner as you can get, you can keep running here and then zipper lasts just enough that if you jump off this ledge right here and then over that box, uh, you, you always make that jump. So we have climb number two. Um, the inputs for this are the same. You just jump up like that, you avoid the boxes. And getting fast at it is again a different story. But this actually is a, a, is a, is a easier climb sorry, than the first one. Uh, the first one there's I think a risk of death. This one it's not really a risk of death. Um, I guess it's worth noting like if you really jump far from here, you can go like that and you can miss that pipe because the hitbox is a little bit weird. This happened in that tournament that Kat and I hosted. <laughs> I actually took a death there doing that. So I should probably point that out. But I mean, it's not like a weird hitbox. So as long as you jump like, you know, like that or whatever, you'll, you'll hit it. It's just like right off the very corner or whatever. There's kind of like a weird hit detection there. But we jump up like that. And then here we have a mouse. This, the way that the mice work in this game is they will not, like if, if they're, you see how they activate or whatever, if they see you and you're on the ground, they'll start running at you. Um, but if you're like in the air or whatever and they don't see you yet, they, they won't lunge at you, see? It doesn't activate. So once we get up here, <clears throat> you want to make a full jump from about here, and you want to land basically in like the middle of this box, and then jump over that mouse. So... That's how we deal with him, because if you jump like really early, like really, really early, then you'll probably get hit by him. So one way that we can do that is, again, I would say probably jumping from about here, so we can go back down that way. So we want to drop down through, you can't drop down through like the, the thick pole. What's up, Tuniki Dan? Hey, Dan, man. Or like the wired part, so you have to like go down through like the exposed wire. 
so that part's easy enough. So here is where there's like the first major deviation, like full jump that mouse. There's two ways to do this. Um, a lot of people were asking me like when Kat and I hosted that tournament, because I had a different setup. So the first kind of like normal setup is you damage boost twice. You jump and you, you want to damage boost, like how this game works is the last available frame, or as close to frame perfect as possible, you want to turn around and face left. So you want to jump basically into like that electricity and then literally face left and you'll boost right. So the way that you're facing, you boost in the opposite direction. And the old setup was here. We boost off that one, we jump up, we full jump again. We full jump, we boost off that one. We jump over that mouse, we jump there. I'll explain that section after. And then we go into like this little section, but at this section you have one health. <clears throat> so there's two different kind of like ways that you set this up. So if we have full health here, you can jump and you can like build that little tower and then you jump up. So the section, I routed it differently and I'll, I'll edit it in post because I'm 100% not sure. I'm still pretty sure it's about like 0 0.2 faster. Um, but the way that I routed this was I actually grabbed this box and then I landed in between this mouse. And then I still did the normal damage boost, which of course we failed. But I still did the normal damage boost because that way I have two health. And I won't make a save state, but I'll s explain both sections after. Let's have to think about how to do that logically. Um, but the, the upside to having two health for this screen is there's this damage boost off this mouse here. So you avoid like that little tower and putting it together. So I'm pretty sure this is faster. I'll edit it in post, it'll actually make like a proper task and I'll, I'll time it to like the frame with like perfect inputs and stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure this is like 0 0.2 faster as long as you don't go like this on this box and like bump it really badly and then grab it like that. As long as you can kind of grab this box as frame perfectly as possible and then land and then jump immediately, I'm pretty sure that's faster. But again, I'll edit that in post and I'll figure that out. If you want to do that, the input, like when you're when you're grabbing a box, you want to be holding like A and B into like the very corner. And then you can kind of like frame perfectly grab the box as close to frame perfectly as possible. You should be able to grab boxes and stuff like that without ever like bumping them. So if you want to do that shot, the first step is literally grabbing this box. Ideally as frame perfectly as possible and then jumping. And you'll land right in between both the mouse and electricity if you let go of right. You have to let go of right for a couple frames because otherwise you like smash into the electricity going too far right over. From there you jump over, you jump under this box and you keep running and you again boost off that. It doesn't matter which, um, which strat you go for, like the double damage boost here or this mouse boost after. You want to jump like on that weird power pole on the right. You want to jump pretty much like halfway off of it and it'll make that B fly down. So that part remains the same. And if you do want to go for the most boost, I have to try to figure this out in real time. So there's a pencil, the blue pencil. I want to land on the corner of the blue pencil, jump to the far right on the blue pencil, full jump over the mouse, actually short jump over the mouse and then jump up again. I don't want to make a save state here yet because otherwise I have to go back. I guess it doesn't really matter so I can make a save state here because I can just load the other save state from the power pole. But you want to jump here, here, full jump over and then jump up like that and boost. So this is also kind of like subject to controversy because there is ways that you can boost off that mouse that are better than other ways. So if you can boost off the mouse, you can immediately jump out of like that hit animation on like the best kind of boost. Whereas sometimes if you boost kind of late or whatever, he gets stuck in this hit animation. So to save time on this, I'm pretty sure you need kind of like the better boost where you boost, you know, like kind of early or whatever. Um, because at least that way when you boost over as, as close as possible, you can immediately jump out of that animation. So that's where also some of that time save is because if you get stuck there, see like there I got stuck and I couldn't jump out of it. Um, it's probably not as fast as just like climbing the tower. So the last part of this screen is actually really simple. Um, it's the same actually for both. You can go top or bottom route, it doesn't really matter. But you full jump off here, you'll always miss that mouse just slightly. So you want to like full jump off like this top box. So from here you have choices. <laughs> you can go up to the top or you can go on the bottom, it doesn't really matter. So if you want to jump on the top, it's maybe a little bit easier, but I mean, avoiding the mice on the bottom is not that bad. But if you want to jump on the top, just jump off like the top of this pencil and then 
I guess, down the top rope. Or if you want to go in the bottom, uh, you walk off this box, you just full jump over this mouse, and then we're done. So from here, we'll do the other strat. We'll boost off here. Same thing, about midway through you jump on that box, midway through that power pull you jump over, it'll manipulate the B properly. So for this section, um, you want to jump up here onto like this flask thing. And then it's actually important to like walk off this box, because if you automatically jump off this box, that mouse won't activate, like you won't trigger that mouse. So you want to walk off the box, full jump, and then if you're doing the other one, you just full jump off that thing. You immediately pick up that little, I don't know what this is, I think it's like a metal box or something. But you full jump, you just B, B, and then you jump up that way, and it's the same, same ending. You can go top or bottom round, it doesn't really matter which way you want to do. So from there we have a boss fight. And the boss is actually pretty easy. So a lot of people, one thing that you should really start getting used to um, is jumping and grabbing this ball because like every single boss fight pretty much involves this opening. So a lot of people just go like this and they pick it up. But you can jump and grab, so you just A, B and then jump and grab near the ball or whatever. And this boss is very rhythmic. Uh, if you jump about halfway and you wait, this is probably the easiest boss in the entire game. Although all the bosses are pretty easy in this game. Um, you just jump and up throw obviously like this as much as you can. And you want to time it. So you want to time it like just as his invincibility frames are running out. Because if you spam, you see it's like all off kilter and like weird. So yeah, beaker, I'm sorry. Potion, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so yeah, basic timing. Um, it's pretty rhythmic, you'll get it. It's really not hard. This boss is very easy. Alright, so after it was all said and done, the most boost loses 8 frames compared to the double damage boost. But the biggest loss for the most boost is something I don't understand. When you get boosted up there, sometimes you can immediately jump out of hit animation, sometimes you get stuck. And in this particular task, I could not get unstuck. So if you could figure out how to immediately jump, I think the potential is still there for it to be faster. So it's worth noting, at least when you're playing this solo, especially in co-op, this is always a one-up on this side. All the other ones are stars and flowers and stuff like that. Okay, B, there's actually a little bit going on here. Um, I see a lot of people when they're doing this, they like jump and they go like this, and then they keep running through, but let's just keep doing that, we'll see. Uh, okay, you see at some point we got like this massive leg because all the mice are like coexisting together. So. <laughs> There's, there's actually a very specific way to do that. And the very first part of the screen is walking off here and then jumping over. That activates that mouse and it runs that way. So we want to actually fall there and then we jump. From here, once that mouse is gone, uh, I guess you can just, like, it doesn't really matter. You can jump on that box, you can jump up. It's not like you need to make like full or like small jumps or something like that. But we want to get up here and same thing. We want to fall down. Fall down here, and then that mouse activates and runs off screen as well. So that's basically the two objectives in this screen. So walk off here, this one rather, and then here we just jump over. So that way we minimize the mouse leg, and that screen's honestly not that hard, um, but it minimizes the mouse leg, and no mice chase us. <laughs> we, we don't have like this massive mouse related leg. So from here, there's two different strategies that you can do. Um, I actually want to include maybe an easy strat, if I think about that. Because a lot of people, they skip this box, and I've always picked it up. So right when you like load the screen out of it, you can jump, you can grab that box. So the easy strat would be, this removes all timing. For some reason, if you have a box on this flask, or this flask, I read your message again, on this tap, uh, if you push down or you throw the box, it actually counts as like hitting the tap. So you can very consistently, if you like suck at this input, go like this with this box and then uh, deactivate the taps that way. This is obviously not faster than the, like the best way that you can do this screen. So the best way that you can do this screen is the first tap, you jump as far as you can, so you're like landing on the pixel. You low jump and then you throw it. So that gets rid of the first tap. And then the hitbox on these taps on the ground, you see that? 
that's kind of like your, your input. You want to like literally walk to like that pixel and go back and forth left and right like that. So a lot of people they like run back and forth like this and it's not necessary because like the hitbox and the tap is like really really like to the like the left corner pixel. So you can like literally see how easy it is to activate that. So ideally you'd want to go like that or something like that as quickly as you can. Just and it's the same for the bottom tap. Here you jump three times. Here you go three times and then here. So each tap is obviously the same. Um, we have these two barriers coming up. The way that I do that section is I full jump from about here and then I full, well I don't full jump, I like kind of like mid jump. But it gets in between like both of those weird green spread shots or whatever. So these guys are really not that hard to manipulate. Um, that's how I do that one. And we have like coming up the favorite section of everybody, flies. There's multiple different ways to do this. There's not like a right or wrong way because each way is proper. Um, as long as you're able to manipulate the fly in a very consistent way, I would say do whatever you want to do. But the way that I learned this is you jump from about here and you do a full jump, maybe a little bit earlier, maybe about here rather, because I want to do a short jump onto that box and then like that, the fly will always fly over me. And then I want to like long jump over that top section or whatever. So that's the way that I manipulate that particular fly, it'll always be the same. So, I mean, I, I actually don't know alternative strats, so I probably won't mention them. And to jump over this green spread shot, I jump about here and I just full jump over it. You'll make it every time. Reiji? Welcome, dude. Thank you for following. How are you doing today? If you do bump, I guess it's worth noting, if you bump that apple or whatever, you can still make that low jump. So I guess that's like the one upside I like about that strat too. So from here, there's also more flies. Um, the way that I learned this section was, this actually matters. If you jump, like facing left off this little knob thing, and you jump down, it'll spawn that fly really really early um, if you jump like this off like the half half right side of it and you go down it spawns it even earlier so if you walk off this knob like halfway through um, and then you jump all the way down to that pot and then you come back up it'll always spawn that fly again in a very specific way so that gets rid of that fly and that's the last fly as long as you're holding right and you're not stopping like if you hold left and you stop and do other stuff like that like sometimes you you spawn more flies but as long as you do this section and you jump like that, um, it'll always spawn that fly. So that's one way to get rid of it. From here, we have another couple options. Yo, what's up, Stance? I appreciate that, Hostman. How'd your Batman go? Um, from here, we have another couple options. So there's actually like a really weird, very close to frame perfect thing that I thought about including. And I don't know if it's fast yet, so I'll also edit that in post. But if you jump and full jump here, you'll clear these boxes. And then you have frames that you can jump over, like this little green spread shot ball thing again. So you can go like that and you can just keep going. The upside to that is it eliminates these drop downs that you would normally do, where you lose some frames. So you can time this like literally to the frame where you can like just jump over, but it's an extremely tight jump. Uh, I don't know if it's faster. I have to double check that. So I'll definitely double check that after, but you can do that, that's an option. Um, it's just very, 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 very tight. Otherwise, you can drop down twice like that. And if you drop down twice, you go down like this, you full jump up, and then you jump over that apple. Welcome to New Viewer Stance. Hope your Batman went well. So yeah, either way that you want to do it, I guess we do it this way, because most people would probably go for the drop down. You jump up here and you full jump over this apple. So the next part is dropping down here. You bonk your head on that box, and then when you get to this box in particular, um, as long as you're holding right, like if you haven't broken your momentum or anything like that, you can up jump and grab the box and then you can get rid of that guy. So you have to delay that jump like really, really, really slightly because if you do it really, really fast, that alien guy or whatever above you, he'll hit you. Um, like that. 
So, I mean, like, you're, you're delaying for probably a matter of, like, one or two frames, literally. And then from here, we drop down twice. You'll avoid the green shot, you'll drop in between these little alien guys. So, that section one more time. It's pretty straightforward. It's not that hard. I guess one thing to note is with boxes, um, there's two different things. If you're holding up B, you like literally throw the box vertically like that. Whereas if you're throwing like forward B, um, there's kind of like this weird delay. So for that particular box grab, you want to be holding up B because you'll get rid of the box with losing minimal frames. So for here, <laughs> okay, I, I really thought about how to explain this boss because ironically the spaceship boss is like probably one of the harder bosses like in the entire game to learn properly. Um, depending which strat that you go for anyway, Endy's strat is probably one of the hardest strats in the entire game. It's not super hard, but it's definitely hard. Um, but there's actually two very viable backup strats. So. I'll edit it and post again, because um, I'll make like actually dedicated tutorials to explain that. Uh, because to, to explain every single boss fight in a very frame specific way, in kind of like real time, I'll, I'll do that later. Alright, welcome to post edit. <laughs> um, so we have three different spaceship kills. The first one that I really want to start out with is the back kill, and I'll work up to Zerilla and then I'll work up to Andy. So the back kill is probably one of the easiest in the entire game. You go like this, you grab and you jump the ball, but you want to jump in a very kind of like slightly delayed way because if you jump immediately, you'll probably hit this alien or you'll just dodge the alien. So you want to wait until the alien's kind of on the ground and throw up. From there, the next thing that we want to do is you want to get to about here and then you watch the spaceship. Um, it'll go off screen. As soon as it goes off screen, neutral jump and throw and then grab the ball again. It actually hits the spaceship off screen uh, with the way that this, this spaceship loads whatever its hitbox. So as you land, jump and throw and hit it again. It'll hit twice, go over there, grab the ball, uh, and then throw it up and it'll die as soon as it comes back on screen. So in comparison to Endy's kill, this is about one second, like 1.3 slower. It's considerably slower, um, but the upside is it's very easy compared to like Endy's actual kill. Zero thirty three had um, a variation of Endy's spaceship kill, which is actually very worth mentioning. It's faster than the backup kill that you guys just saw. And the way that we do this one is actually, with the way that the ball momentum works, is we want to get up to like this line, basically. And if you jump and throw, you see how like Chip kind of like immediately grabs the ball as it hits the wall. Uh, this is a lot easier to kind of like time out for a lot of people compared to the, the third throw in specific in Endy's spaceship kill. The third throw in like Andy's actual kill is very hard. Um, a, a lot of timing is kind of required, but this is timing. Or this this that's bleh, this timing is really not that hard. You just need to bounce the ball against the wall. So for Zerilla, we do the exact same thing as the backup. We jump over that first alien, but this time we hit twice. We grab the ball like that in the wall, and then we throw it like this and. Fast Zerilla kill compared to the fastest Endy kill might lose like anywhere between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5. But it's considerably far less than the 1.3 loss that you'll get um, doing the backup kill compared to Endy's actual standard kill. So last kill is Endy's standard kill. The hardest part about this kill is the third throw in particular. It messes up a lot of people. So. The same opening is the same. We want to jump and hit the spaceship twice. But we want to jump around. You see how I dodged the alien? But we also have to jump in such a way that we're high enough when we grab that ball. And I had to pause it to kind of like jump and show you. Okay, well, we have to avoid the alien first of all. But then the second part is we have to get underneath that ball. And we have to line up high enough in the air. Um, so we're grabbing the ball and we're throwing it probably at about this height. Because if we throw the ball up here, or slightly lower, it's going to hit the alien, or hit the, the ship, sorry. But if we throw it, like, I'll actually try to show it on the next cycle. I'll make a save state and show you guys why his, his throws look like so hard. Um, so if it goes like that, okay, maybe slightly lower. So if it's as low as that, I'll try it. That's too high. Anyway, if it's as low as that, Spaceship, please come. Okay. See? It'll miss. 
So there is actually a very precise um, line that you need to throw to hit that. And what makes Endy's kill so hard is by the time that you're grabbing the ball and you're jumping and grabbing the ball again, you have frames literally to grab the ball and then throw it and release it and then come back and catch it. So it's really just the third throw that makes it really hard. Um, but it's, it's again the fastest way that you can kill the spaceship. So how Endy's kill kind of looks like is we want to jump, throw, throw, dodge alien, throw really high, neutral jump, and then grab again. And we kill it that way. D is actually one of the hardest stages in the entire game. Um, I would probably rank it saying J. I don't know about H. It's either H or D next in my books. Um, but in terms of like screens and stuff like that, D is actually probably one of the harder ones. All of the screens in D, actually. So first step is again holding right. You want to small jump on those boxes and jump up under these two boxes here. The hitboxes are actually pretty friendly. Uh, you can get like really, really, really close to like these boxes you see. So it's not like they're they're weird. Um, so as long as you kind of stay like a little bit far to the right, it's not like they're tight jumps or anything like that. Same with here. There's like a, a, a box right there that'll never hit you. You can just walk over it. So the hitboxes are actually pretty friendly on these boxes. <laughs> and then I get smashed in the face as I say that. So you full jump. I guess I use the marker right here. Uh, so I full jump on these flowers, whatever. I just let myself fall when I jump over that box. So full jump there, fall down, full jump here. I walk over that box and then I full jump. So here's kind of like the first hard part, I think, for D. There's three different ways that I want to include here. Some are slower than others. Um, some are obviously better than others. The fastest way that you can do this is ND section. So you run up and you grab this box in particular, and you jump and you, you frame perfect grab or whatever as close as possible, and then you up B that box. And you, sorry, you up B uh, like the jack, not the box, like the jack in the box, whatever this thing is called. And you turn around like probably on this box right here and jump up and then face left. And you'll get boosted onto like that other section. So this is ND's probably fastest way to do that section. Uh, the other alternative is you skip that box, you run underneath that jack in the box thing, you turn left and then you get boosted up there. So this is actually kind of tight and you do the exact same thing to get over that one. Um, this one's a little bit tighter. I think actually ND's, even though it's harder um, and faster, it's actually easier ND's way compared to this way. There's a lot of times where you like literally go like this and then you'll jump up because you didn't go like too far left or whatever. Um, but the second, I think, fastest way is doing it that way. And the same thing, like to do that secondary damage boost, you basically get on this box, you face left, uh, kind of like Chip is hanging off the box or whatever, and then you neutral jump up. And Sinister, I believe, had this strat where you jump over top of this box and you turn and you face left into, again, this jack-in-the-box thing. So this loses some time because you wait on the second uh, jack-in-the-box boxes, whatever you want to call those guys. But the upside to jumping off here and damage boosting like that is you have in invincibility frames on the second pair of jack-in-the-boxes or whatever. Uh, so you don't, you can like get like right in here or whatever and then uh, take that damage boost, whereas the other two, you don't have that many iframes to work with. So if you're just starting out, I would say you're probably losing like, I don't know, like 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 or something doing Sinister's old way, or at least I saw it in Sinister's run. I don't know if Sinister came up with it. Um, but compared to here, where you don't really have that many iframes to work with. So I would say easiest is probably this strat. Um, second easiest might be Endies, but second fastest is apparently this strat where you double damage boost and you go up that way. And then fastest is Endies way where you throw the box and you up be like that because you eliminate any waiting. So from here, um, we wind up on like this little box section. It's the same for all sections. Is you want to be about right here when you make the jump. If you jump, because if you're doing this optimally, you have one health here. Uh, so obviously if you die, you just go back to like the, the beginning of the stage or whatever. But from here, you, you want to do a full jump and you'll clear both this weird purple ledge, this ledge right here, and you'll end on the apple. Um, so you want to jump from about here and you just full jump, like you hold A as long as possible and you'll end on that apple. 
And from there, this, this jump, it gives a lot of people trouble. It's not that bad once you figure it out. Because if you do jump too high, you'll like hit into like that blue boxing glove or whatever of that guy. Um, but as long as you do like a short jump, you, you see like you can clear here pretty easily. Like it's not super frame perfect or like frame tight or anything like that. But as long as you do like a low jump right there, you, you'll get under here. And this is probably like one of the scariest parts when you're learning this because if you die, you die. There's no checkpoints or anything like that in this game. Like you automatically get sent back to like the beginning of the level. So. Um, I would say, like, I don't even know what I use as a marker, like just before here maybe, and then I tap A as like light as possible, so that's probably what I'm using as like a visual cue, is like he's not off the box because at that point you might get killed if you're jumping, um, but like right here lined up with the box, I'm pushing A as lightly as possible and then I just make it across that way. There's actually a very good visual cue right here. This kind of like triangle, this was in the original tutorial by Kavik, so I'm assuming this was his visual cue. But this like triangle right here, the, the very beginning part of it right there, as long as you full jump there, like right before it, um, you'll always land on like this ledge. So like right there. Um, and then it's, it's very consistent, like I haven't died in this section in a very long time, because you're at one health when it comes to here, so as long as you can kind of like line it up with like that one little area and then jumping, that's how you make that jump. So that's one of the very few, actually there's a couple visual cues that I use for this one, but um, as long as you line up like that jump there, I'm assuming that visual cue came from Kavik. That makes that section pretty easy. So from here, um, there's not really like a right or wrong way, you can you can jump around and do whatever you want to do. Uh, so there's a couple things to explain. You can fall through the, the floor, like if there's a flower lined up with like this little okay, rabbit. If there's a flower lined up with like this, this bridge or whatever, if you see, like if you jump and the hitbox of the flower um, is like lined up directly with like the, the perimeter of the outline of like Chip's body, he like literally falls through the floor. Um, normally you can't fall through this floor ever unless you're holding down. So this is like one of the places that the game can kind of juke you and screw you over. But to get around that, um, you can walk. Okay, I have to make a save state a little bit earlier. So the, the problem with that is if you... Wait, I'll do it on this one. If you... There's like, if you watch Chip or whatever, I don't know if I can say... Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you watch Chip, if you walk over a flower... Can you stop chicken guy? If you walk over a flower, there's like frames of animation where like Chip will like look like he's crouching down to like pick up the flower or something, you see that. So if you do it really slow you can literally see. Um, but that's like him trying to fall through the ground, but if you're holding right he like picks up the flower instead. So why this matters is it actually eats your jump input. And when you're learning this game, it is very 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 common for you on this particular screen on one particular flower to get your jump input eaten. So I figured out kind of like a way to avoid that and it comes up here. So you want to walk over this, fla this flower, sorry, and as soon as you walk over it, like right there, so kind of like right here but on the first flower, uh, just full jump over and then that way you'll completely avoid that flower. Yeah, or not the flower, sorry, but you'll avoid your jump and put it in. So the first thing we have to do is we have to grab this box to recover our health, and then you jump like that. You'll always clear that jump, um, otherwise, like if you do it too early, you can literally see, like, I don't know how often I would get my jump put in, but there, see? Like, you probably heard, like, the jump going in, but it, it got eaten, like, it doesn't come out. So that was my way to figure out, okay, well, this is how I can, like, jump over this thing. I just let Chip collect the flower, and then about halfway over, I jump like that. So Hyrexen had a really good strat here. Um, th there's actually a lot going on in like this next little section, but Hyrexen had a really good strat, and it makes this next section really consistent. Um, because I walk off this box, I full jump, and then I go like that, and I up B, because I'm holding that box anyway, and that's like the, the least amount of frames that I can waste to get rid of that box, and it adds a delay where I can jump over that ball. But if you want to get rid of that box before, um, because some people like just grab the box and they throw it or whatever, 
Hyraxon had a strat where if you jump here and you you release jump for or sorry you release like the direction pad for just a couple frames you can actually jump over this ball whereas if you're normally running through here and you're trying to jump over that like this is very dangerously close to frame perfect if you don't break your momentum even slightly i think it might be like a two frame window or something to jump over that ball if you're just holding right so it's very 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 um tight to do this without a box or without throwing that box up like that but one way around that is like when you land just let go of the d-pad for not even frames and once you let go um it, it literally just lines up a lot better the, the hitbox of the ball will probably never hurt you so that's one safe strat that i didn't want to include uh, so how this works after is you want to full jump off this ledge going up and then low jump and then boost off this ball so there there is something there's a dude named the mage pie and he's a really cool creative brain and i do want to include that because first of all it's cool but there is actually a little bit of utility is a lot of people have a hard time like boosting off this ball or whatever and the mage pie figured out a really cool strat where if you jump and you grab this box you can jump and grab this box it's frame perfect so there's like no picking up animation or anything like that but uh, like that. If you jump and you grab, you clip into the, this thing, if you push it down and then you shoot, two things happen. First of all, you can clip through like this entire switch. Second of all, you can make this jump um, and you can you can get through here without actually making that ball boost. So this is sadly slower because you're waiting on this section, but at the same time, it's still viable if you don't really want to go for that ball boost, you want to make it a little bit safer. This was not in the original tutorial um, because this was found very much after it was made. So again, credits go to Mage Pie, but jumping over here, not doing that ball boost, it does save you a health. Um, it does make the section a little bit better, like, you would have technically two health going into this. Um, you, you would have one extra health to work with, because normally the next screen goes like this, and then you damage boost off that guy and you have one health. So if you wanted to make it a little bit safer and then lose, you know, like 0 0.5 or something like that, you would save the health here technically, and then you'd still boost off this guy. So you have two health to work with on the screen. But fastest way would be again, triggering that switch, ball boosting. And then from here, the next part of the screen is you run to like as far left to that box as you go, and then you just neutral jump up. That's how you damage boost on this screen. Um, you just literally run, turn around, neutral jump up, and then you jump up this way. So once we're up here, um, avoid spawning these stars. This is something that I'll have to check as well. Um, I don't know if it's in solo, but co-op for sure, the stars create lag frames. Um, so like a lot of people, like this section, you might spawn some lag frames doing that. I'd have to double check, but you can just easily just like keep your jump slow or whatever to avoid doing that. So from here, there's a couple different strats. One actually comes from the mage pie again, so I'll explain that one. There's a box coming up, and it is like notorious for being probably one of the most annoying boxes in the entire game. Because this guy can make you waste probably upwards to like 0 0.5, just the way that he spawns. And the Mage Pie had a really good strat. So you grab this box right here, and then you jump up, you hit him like that, and you jump on his platform and then jump down. So it actually despawns the box the entire time like that. Um, so that's actually one really, really decent way to get rid of that box. Yo, what's up, base guy? How did Goof Troop and Tetris attack go? Welcome to new viewers, and thank you for reading as well. So, Mage Pie strat. Again, throw the box, go like that. You despawn that box. It's actually pretty fast. Um, this is actually pretty fast. Sinister had a secondary strat that involves this box. You grab the box like this. Um, if I can grab the box anyway. And you bring the box with you, and you immediately jump and throw, and it usually kills that box right here. Uh, this is like 95%, literally like 95% of the time, if you jump and you just immediately throw that box, you'll kill the box. 
Uh, but the downside is there is probably like a very low percent of failure. I've, I've been killed on runs with it before, and if you're doing this properly, you'll have one health here at this point. So you have definitely options. And the third way to deal with this box is spawning. See like that, that's actually really good, kind of like juxtaposition. The third way of dealing with this box is actually avoiding that box. And the way that I used to deal with it is I jumped like, so Chip is like literally on the very corner pixel, like it's pretty much as far left as he can go like that. And you kind of like low jump up and then you low jump up that way and then you go under the box. So this is pretty consistent. Um, you want to intentionally like short jump the other jump and you can go under the jump that way. I've never been able to jump over the box. Uh, there is like specific patterns where like people go like that, but I found it really awkward jumping over the box because the next step is grabbing this box. So I always used to go under and then you full jump and you grab that box and then you jump over like this. So there's three different very viable strats there. Um, I probably wouldn't go over the box just because again it lines up this secondary box grab and I don't understand the best way that you could like jump over and then land here really late and then still jump and grab that box without wasting time. So I would go under the box, I would use Sinister Strat, I would use the Mage Pie Strat. Um, they definitely have decent ways of dealing with that box. Something silly to note is speaking of boxes, if you grab a box and you throw it right here, it kills something. I don't know what it kills. <laughs> There's like something off screen. Uh, that's kind of like a mystery. So something just died, but I don't know what it was. But in terms of that, uh, you want to grab this box, you jump up, and then you jump around like that. So from here, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we full jump here, we full jump here, and we let that box just go by. You jump up that platform a little bit. Full jump, full jump, and then full jump and ride the boss. Uh, this boss, there's two different ways that people do it. Um, I mean, like, I, I don't know what I would advocate when you're first learning this because the safe spot, I guess, first of all, to understand is where this ball spawns. If you pick it up and just stand here, you'll literally see um, you're safe, at least in the, the demo mode RNG. Like, the, the robot, the robot, sorry, has two patterns. He'll never hit you between these two spaces. So I'll probably edit this also and I'll make like a more detailed robot boss fight because either way that you want to kill the boss, um, it's kind of involved in what you have to do, but kind of as an overview, there's three different ways where people go like this and then they kill it that way. Um, so you, you throw five shots like that or you throw three shots like that and then you throw a vertical shot, which is what I do. So I go like this and I go like that, and then I throw the last vertical shot, which hits twice, um, and you get closer and closer, so like that, and then it kills it. So I'll probably explain like the inputs required and stuff like that in, uh, you know, like a, a secondary video or whatever, and I'll add it afterwards and post, but, because in terms of the robot, that's probably like maybe the most second complex fight. Um, it's the, the boss fights in this really aren't hard. It's really just the ship, I think, for the most part, and the robot. So I'll explain the robot in a better, a better, a better video. Sorry. All right. So for the robot kill, um, there's basically two ways that people kind of do this one. There's kind of like the vertical shot method, where like one hit will hit twice, and then there's a horizontal way where there's no vertical shot and you just throw five balls uh, horizontally into the robot. So both are equally fast optimized. Um, I don't know which one's harder, like I would say they're both kind of hard to understand because at that point like you need to have a pretty strong mastery of like the way that the ball moves and stuff like that. But in terms of difficulty, it's not super hard, like it's, it's probably something that you could learn fairly easily and it's definitely easier than ND Spaceship. And if anything, I would say try to learn the robot first and then go back and then try to learn the spaceship because this requires like fairly precise for the most part movements and stuff like that. So when it comes to the ball in general, um, one thing that you really want to do is like you really want to anticipate it basically with like Chip's face. So when the ball and you're about to catch it, like you really want to like jump. So um, wait, 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 one more cycle. You really want to jump. So by the time that you're catching it, like you're jumping basically into the ball face first. And the reason that you don't want to jump late is because it actually cuts, you see how like your your cup 
uh, your jump momentum is like cut there. If you jump late and you grab the ball, uh, you literally have your, your jump height like half, cut in half. And then on top of that too, if you jump really late, there's like this really long ball animation where sometimes it takes forever to pick up. And if you get that, like that right there, I don't know what triggers that exactly, but if you get that, it makes the robot kill substantially harder. So if you're doing the horizontal way, you want to jump and throw the ball immediately, and then move over slightly, and then don't move anymore, just keep throwing. Um, the way that the robot lines up and goes back and forth on the screen, it'll line up. If you're doing the vertical throw, on the fourth throw and the fifth throw, uh, it's going to be the same damage. You have to throw the fourth throw a little bit late, but you need to move closer to the robot to do that. So it's the same startup, you immediately throw it, and then you move closer to the robot, and then you throw it late on that throw, um, and then you'll, you'll kill it on the vertical throw going up. So like that. So each one optimized is roughly the same. The horizontal might be slightly faster, um, but overall, yeah, just, just practice it. It's not too difficult. And I would say again, really emphasize that point, if you're struggling on any spaceship kill, even though B comes first, learn the robot kill and then go back and then try to figure out uh, any spaceship kill because I think the more fluid you are with the movement with the robot, the easier the spaceship is going to be. Um, moving on to F. F is a weird screen. Um, it has one of the, the, the hardest strats in the entire game. It's called the Yoga Boost. It's a two frame window. So I guess the first part here is when you're moving right, there's so many different ways that you can set up the screen. I see Andy go like this and then he jumps that way because he like buffers that one jump so you can jump over that ball. Uh, Sinister had a strat where I think like you throw a box or something like that and I've never actually timed anything. I just go like this and I jump over the balls as they kind of like roll down like that. So whatever you're comfortable with, as long as you're not, you know, like waiting like this and then waiting for each ball to go like that or whatever and you're losing a lot of time that way. Um, I, I don't know what the best way I would explain to do this section is because as I said, Sinister, I'll probably link his video directly. Uh, he's got like a series of buffers that's like almost automatic. I don't think that I would prefer that. Like I actually prefer kind of like the manual timing of going like this and like jumping over the balls as they fall. Um, so I'll try to figure out like the best way to explain that because there's multiple different ways that you can set up the screen. but. And they don't really lose time uh, compared to each other. It's just, again, comes down to your execution and making sure you don't bonk yourself or anything like that. But in terms of this section right here, there's a two frame window. You have to walk chip all the way to the ledge like that and then face left. Pretty much like, I wouldn't say on this pixel, but like really, really deep into like that ledge. And this is one of the hardest damage boosts in the entire game because if you miss it, uh, or if you get hit backwards, you lose about 0.6. And if you get it, again, you, you save what, 0.6 or something like that. But I've always told people when they're learning this, 100% go for this boost anyway. Like even though it's a two frame window and it's very hard, you actually don't need health on this screen at all. You don't need health on the next screen, but on top of that too, is if you play it safe, like let's say you go like this and you play it safe, you actually have to wait for this second ball to come down. Whereas if you go like this and let's say you, you go like that, but you fail it, you see how the ball spawns, you don't have to wait. So even though it's a two frame window, even though it's probably one of the hardest strats in the entire game, uh, even if you fail it, going for it, um, you will save time than if you don't go for it at all. So there's 100% no reason not to go for it. And on top of that too, the, the second part is actually very free. The first part is again like a two frame window, so it's very very hard to hit. But the second part, you literally have like 100 frames to go like this, not die in the pit. But after you get knocked over, you literally have like 100 frames to like go down here and just face left. Or fall off this ledge and like face left, however you want to do it. So it's very, very easy um, to set up the second part. It's really just the first part. So from here, we have two different things. Um, Andy brings a box. I should have shown that strat. But you have to waste a couple frames because you wind up up here. And if you just try to jump over that ball, you'll get killed. So you have to delay very slightly. I've never used a box to delay. I just like jump up here, and then I stop, and then I keep going. Um, but. Uh, and to use like a box or a buffer, but as long as you have kind of like a, a good internal understanding of like how long that you need to wait, because it's just a couple frames, it's not like you're waiting that long. Um, you won't get killed by that ball as it's falling. So from here, the rest of the stage is actually really easy. You full jump from about here 
uh, you land on this box and then you full jump up to here. You full jump up to here, you full jump up to here, and then you just jump off like the corner of that to clear that rooster guy or whatever. So, um, there's really not much else going on on this screen. So, this next section is, I wouldn't say like one of the hardest sections, but a lot of people don't do it properly, and I was never doing it properly myself. Andy also corrected that a while ago, um, because when you originally come in here, what I was doing was I was jumping up like this, and then I was waiting, and then I was jumping across, and I was like, oh, this is easy. So you just climb up this way. And uh, what you're supposed to do is like right when you enter this, this room or whatever, is you jump and you grab this box up here. You just immediately jump and grab it, and you get rid of it and you jump like that and you scroll the screen, but then this is where it's hard because you have to anticipate those two pipes jumping and then you have to jump on this next pipe and that saves about like a second and a bit. Whereas if you're just going like this and you're waiting or whatever and then you come back down, you'll see how easy this, this pipe jump is now because I can just jump over like that. Whereas before, if you spawn the screen this way, you're saving about a second, um, but then look, if I wait even a little bit, so watch, I'll just die. I'll miss that pipe jump. So that specific pipe spawns way faster, um, but to do that screen, you want to immediately, like immediately jump and grab this box and then get rid of it. And then from here, uh, as the pipes are spawning, uh, just anticipate, like literally anticipate. So that's probably like the hardest part is like just anticipating like that, that movement of those two pipes or whatever, because you have to be jumping kind of like before they spawn. So it's not that hard because, but if you miss it like that, you'll die it makes the, that cycle way harder. So that's like the only really downside to that. Or even if you're slow jumping up. So like if you wait doing that box grab strat and then you jump, you'll die all the time. So you really have to anticipate like these pipe jumps. And then from here, same thing. You anticipate this one and you jump and you scroll the screen like that. And then these next ones um, are always gonna be the same. So you wanna jump, scroll the screen because that allows that last pipe to spawn and then jump up that way. So ideally once you're up here, um, the faster way to do this is you can box grab because you don't need to throw this box or do anything like that. And then you just jump up that last section. And that's actually something that's probably worth pointing out is like when I was really new to this and learning it for the first time, I actually jumped around this section thinking that this was like a solid, um, but you can actually just jump right through. So you want to jump, box grab that particular box, go up this way and then just face right and hold right and you'll get up that way you know, as fast as possible. F is not too hard. Um, it's actually pretty easy for the most part, I would say. I mean, like, it's not easy, but I mean, it's, it's easier than other screens for sure in the game. Um, actually, speaking of easy screens, G is probably one of the easiest in the entire game, actually. Uh, there's not a lot going on in this screen in terms of the boss or kind of like the speedrun strats or anything like that. So when you're first starting with G, uh, you hold right literally as you're spawning uh, because you'll fall. And from here, you want to do a short jump up here and then a full jump up here. So kind of like a short jump and a full jump and you'll get under that lizard. But you want to be on the top row um, because there's a jump coming up and it's pretty easy. So this jump actually is, is actually quite hard if you're doing it manually. But if you know how it works, it's actually probably one of the easier jumps in the entire game because if you're jumping off this box and you're trying to jump in between these two lizards, it's actually, I think, a two-frame window to make that jump. So you literally just run. But if you, I used to jump on this box and jump through these lizards and it's literally about a 0 0.5 second loss if they hit you. Um, but jumping between these lizards is again, probably about a two-frame window or something like that if you're doing it manually. So how we do this jump in a very automatic way is this little like fork in the wall right here, uh, whatever you want to call it. If you run right up here before you hit the box, like right before you hit the box, and you full jump on that fork just before, like if you hit the box, you'll mess up the, the setup. But if you do that right before you hit the box, the game just magically lines up. It says you have the correct amount of frames, you have the correct amount of like physics, you have the correct amount of movement, you have everything, and it turns that jump in between two lizards really, really easy. Uh, it's like literally brainless. Uh, it just requires kind of like a little bit of timing and stuff like that. But technically that's faster than dropping down and losing some frames like here. 
Um, so jumping through those two lizards is not as hard as it seems. You just have to like literally full jump uh, right before you're about to hit that box. And 100% of the time, you'll get through that those two lizards. So we want to jump up twice here, literally go like that, and then just run right to that box, full jump over, and then through. So from here, um, you want to jump, like full jump here. There's a lizard down here, he'll hit you if you go down the bottom road. So you want to full jump off this box onto this box, and then from here, you kind of have, sorry, you kind of have some options again. The only important thing is like you don't really bang or bump yourself in any kind of boxes or anything like that. You can go the bottom route or you can go the top route. There's really no time difference. So if you choose to go the bottom route, all you have to do is you literally just do short jumps right before all these boxes and the lizards will all jump over you. Uh, a lot of people choose the bottom route because the top route is a little bit harder, but I've never found it hard because first of all, like there's like this solid sign or something, like if you jump up, it does block you. So sometimes people get stuck there, and then sometimes people somehow get stuck in like this chip machine, whatever this is supposed to be, like I think it's like a poker machine or something. But I've I've alternated between going top and bottom route. I've never once like got stuck in these things or like hit any lizards or anything like that. I don't understand how people think that, you know, like that's that's a weird hard section on the top part because it's really not. I just full jump, full jump I guess there, I guess full jump there or whatever, and then that's it. So it doesn't matter which way that you go, uh, bottom route or top route. Um, I mean, both are very easy. You just have to like really make sure that you jump really low there. And as I said, easy screen, easy stage. Um, this next screen, if you full jump over the rhino, you literally run until that box and you full jump over the rhino. Uh, there's a couple of, oh, that's maybe a bad safe state. There's a couple things on this screen. There's there's actually a frame perfect on this screen that is not in the tutorial, uh, the current tutorial by Havoc. It literally saves 0.1. It's probably not worth going for it, but at the same time, I do it in all the runs, whatever that I've had since probably sub 10. So the first part is like jumping onto like this stool and just walking off. And from there, you have two options. The the current strat is you just walk onto like Oh, I guess it's the next one, sorry. So you walk here. Uh, if you walk onto these boxes and you jump up into that fly, that would be the current strat, is you damage boost. So that is about 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 slower than this frame perfect that I'll explain in a sec. So you can just damage boost. You jump up, you basically like land on those boxes and immediately jump up. And that's the fastest way. I can't jump for some reason, it's just not jumping. But that's uh, kind of like the, the damage boost to it, like that. And then you, you damage boost over that rhino and then you keep going. So the frame perfect, I think it was Endies. You have to like jump off this bomb pretty much like right on the ledge. Uh, and if you jump off that bomb as close off the ledge as possible and you box grab here, you can grab that box and then land on this platform and then you can move right and you can jump over the fly that will spawn. And this saves again about like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. It's not super hard to do this. Um, like it's still frame perfect, but at the same time, if you lose it, like I've always gone for it and I've always done it. And I just learned it that way. Um, but if you lose it, it like it, it's really not that big of a time loss because you're literally losing like 0 0.1. Like failing it, like going like this or something. Uh, like I don't, I don't even know what the time loss would be. I know I've lost like 0 0.2 or whatever failing it. Anyway, the point is, you could jump over there, that frame perfect is there, and it actually sets up really nicely, because on this particular screen, you actually need a box, and you need to be holding a box. So by the time that you get down here, you full jump over those those boxes, whatever, and you need a box to kill that third guy, because it actually despawns a bomb in the wall over here. Why? I actually don't know. <laughs> I've never had this explained to me, like Andy's explained everything else about this game. But I don't know why it despawns that dude. Uh, but if you're doing like the fly damage boosting way and you're just walking off here, you do need to grab a box, but it's really easy because you can grab this box before the rhino destroys it. And you can do the same thing. You can just kill this third guy, and it's always the third guy. Um, it will despawn that box, or the ball, bomb in the wall. So whatever way that you want to do it, um, it's fine. 
as I said, the, the frame perfect is there, it's not in that old tutorial. And it sets up really nicely because again you have a box here. So when we get to the end of that wall, it's worth noting that you save a little bit of frames, like if you go like this and you walk and you grab, um, it's slightly faster if you're in the middle of a jump animation and you're grabbing the bomb. So as low as a jump that you can have, whatever, jumping or grabbing the bomb is slightly better than walking and just like picking it up. So from here, um, we want to jump onto kind of like the middle part of these boxes and then jump over. This is pretty straightforward. This whole screen is really easy. Um, so here we jump over and when we get to like this pile of boxes over here, we just full jump over. It'll clear the rhino because he's already moving and it'll clear those boxes as well. This is like a part that I see a lot of people struggle on uh, is like this next upcoming fly. So. Uh, you can just walk off this ledge by the way, uh, like if you're holding right, you'll always just fall on the bottom. There's like no timing required. You can jump on there, it doesn't matter, like whatever you feel like doing. Um, but the setup from here is you full jump off of like this box right here. You just hold right and you full jump off here. And then this is where people get messed up because they don't do anything and then they walk and I was like, oh, okay, all of a sudden there's a fly. So just jump short and the fly will always spawn like that. Uh, okay. Dude, the safe state's weird. Okay, so just jump short like that and the fly will always spawn and he'll get out of your way. So as long as you like basically, as you land, jump again and then land, uh, the fly will always spawn up there and he'll always get out of your way. So just don't jump too high, otherwise you'll get yourself hit. But that was kind of like my setup for it or whatever, is I full jump off this short jump and then I full jump again. And same thing, uh, you just full jump and you time your jumps like right before the box. So I full jump there and then I just fall down here. And then I full jump off this one and I full jump again. It basically lines itself up. I think this is why G is so really easy of a stage. Um, like basically as soon as you land, you just full jump again. So it's pretty straightforward to like move through. Um, from here, again, same thing. You, you don't want to try to bump this metal box or whatever. So you can just like jump from here over. Uh, I guess it's worth noting, like you can die in that pit if you short jump, but it's really hard to do that. Same here. Um, I've seen people go like this and die before, but it's really not that hard of a jump. You just have to kind of get like beyond that box a little bit and full jump. So the easiest boss in the game, <clears throat> um, casually, it's actually really silly watching people play this one. Because casually, for whatever reason, like this boss usually gives people so much trouble. They literally, <laughs> they literally like when they play this casually, like like this and like oh my goodness this boss is crazy and it's like flying around like that. Um, so all you have to do is grab the ball and then face like one pixel left. And with the RNG lock, he will always throw like this. He'll never ever break this pattern. Uh, so you can literally just go like this, and, and you can kill him very 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 slowly. So he is the easiest boss in the entire game. Um, so how we want to do that a little bit more optimally is when you enter here on the screen, you jump and you immediately grab that ball, you throw it up, you face left, and then again you meet him air to air and obviously hit him just as his iframes are about to end. So really easy boss, probably the easiest boss to learn in the entire game. Nothing very hard about that guy at all. And we have a cutscene after where the chipmunks fly into space for like less than two seconds and then they come back down. <laughs> I always wondered as a kid like why are they even going up there? Like if your destination was this sewer, why are you going to space? But these are the questions we'll never know. So H is a mixture of a really easy screen and a very technically hard screen. Um, so the first thing about H is these pipes. This this giant like middle pipe section right here. There's anywhere the, anywhere that you want to delay, like you don't have to, like you can delay it right here. Actually, I guess I should show it this way. So normally there's like this crap right here. And apparently, <laughs> apparently I despawned him without even trying. So that crab enemy right here, normally he exists and normally he makes jumping down here kind of like slightly awkward and, and slightly hard to do. So the very first thing that we want to do is we want to despawn him. And the visual that I have is in between like this kind of like middle white pipe section. If I'm holding right, I jump, and then I let go of right for frames, and then this crab is no longer here. But you can do that anywhere. Like You can jump on this box and let go, and he's gone. You can even do it, I think, right there. Um, 
or maybe it's like after this section, but like there's not really a, a single spot. Like wherever you really want to delay those couple of frames to despawn that crab, it's probably as good as anywhere else. Because you just have to lose a couple of frames to despawn that crab. So once that crab is gone, uh, you just drop down twice like this, you jump over, and we want to jump twice in succession. So you want to short jump up here, short jump up here, and then long jump over the rest of the crab, because he'll move with his pattern to avoid both those bubbles and uh, also his like body and movement. So from here, I've actually seen people jump all the way from here down. I've actually never done that. I actually wanted to go through like every single person's uh, time on speedrun because I've always jumped down and I've jumped twice like that thinking that I like had to jump here to go here but so many people like Hail Mary and just jump over that so it doesn't really matter but it's just like a small thing that I've noticed because part of me was thinking like oh if I, if I teach it like oh jump here then jump here that might be the only way that other people do that jump like that because everybody else just jumps like this they just automatically clear that second one and it's like oh, okay I'm just a weirdo um, so from here, yo, what's up Mars? I appreciate your host as well. Welcome to your viewers. How'd your stream go? So from here, uh, I want to full jump and then full jump and then full jump again, almost three times in a row. So if you full jump from here, you hit your head on the pipe, it almost lines up perfectly because you land right here. Um, so I guess it would be literally like right before that gap, like so maybe right here is like the first jump. So you literally full jump like almost three times and the the big important part is landing kind of like, oh, actually I'll kill the, the other crowd, but landing kind of like in between the middle here because if you land too far over you might walk off the ledge and then you'll die. So you really want to land like somewhere about right here. Um, but like this is almost automatic. Like. If you, if you time it like that, it's literally very just, okay, jump, jump, land, jump, land, jump, and then keep doing it like that. And your end goal is to get up to this box right here. So this is actually really cool. There's three different very viable ways that you can do the climb in H. Um, I would not recommend the right side one. So the really old way is you jump up here, you let the box go on this jump, and you kill that squirrel. And then you let the box go on that jump and you kill that squirrel, you kill this guy, and then you come up this way, and then you kill it like that. So how that looks faster is like this, you kill, actually I actually haven't done this one in a long time. But you kill that guy, you kill that crab, and then you go up that way. So that was kind of like the old way to do the climb. Uh, Andy's middle way is much more consistent because it removes like some of those box grabs and stuff like that. And the way that you would do that one is you grab this box still, like you jump and grab it. You don't want to be picking it up like this, whatever. So jump and grab it. So you want to like kind of like grind against this pipe. And then on this particular jump, you jump up and you hold left and you hold up and then you up B. It'll kill that crab 100% of the time, but you have to be holding left. Because if you just up B like that, the box for whatever reason doesn't hit this crab. So you go like that and you up B that way and you kill that crab. So from here, we jump up here, we jump up here, we jump up here onto that box, we go over here, and then we grab this box and we kill the squirrel, and then we, again, are at the top of the climb. So how that looks faster is, again, like this. This is super consistent. I would say this is like the easiest way to probably learn the climb right now. 100% um, I would do it. Um, but I would 100% go the middle route. There's no reason to go the right side climb anymore. Um, it's actually faster in the middle if you can get it more consistent, like there is a time save there too. Uh, but yeah, there, there's no reason to be on the right side I think. But the right side is there for preservation, if you want to learn the right side climb that's fine. Whatever you're more comfortable with. But I think honestly, even though it's easier, like the harder part on the middle part is just making sure that you don't like short jump like one of these jumps or whatever and jump like that and then fall or jump like that and bonk your head or something. But I mean, like practicing this one, it's really easy to switch to. And there's only two box grabs compared to like four or something on the right side one. So once we do that, there's one other climb. Um, this one is like partially mine. Um, it's partially from a task and then partially from actually the mage pie again. So the mage pie had some ideas and I kind of turned it into like a more RTA climb. So the same setup as before, you grab that box and you hold up and left. But the difference here 
is we want to jump in between this section and we want to grab this box. So we want to grab this box on the way up and we have to like waste a couple of frames right here. And then we jump here and then we go like that and we kill this guy. And then coming up, we can actually boost off this squirrel to wind up here and use our invincibility frames to jump through that next squirrel. Because if you do it too early, you like wind up in that pipe section. But if you do it too late like that, then you also wind up in that pipe section. So there. So that's what that one looks like. Use the invincibility frames to not only, or sorry, the scroll to boost up there, but you use the invincibility frames to wind up here as well. So this is about 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 faster than the middle climb. Um, but you obviously have to do like the boost perfectly and you can't fail it. <clears throat> so from here, it's pretty easy. I walk to the corner of this box and I just jump down. Uh, you'll always clear the crab as long as you jump on like this particular one and full jump off. There's a couple strats that people deal with the next part with, because the next part has like the best squirrel in the entire game. He is designed to kill. <laughs> like, um, best enemy placement by far. 100% like, he will, he will kill. So the way that a couple people do it um, is actually MagePy has a crazy strat where you can jump off here and you can like grab this box and it's kind of like a frame perfect thing. I don't think it's worth going for yet, but you can like grab the box literally as you land and then uh, not have to worry about like that, not have to worry about his hitbox. But this is, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's close to frame perfect. So the, the other thing that people do is they jump short and then they grab, or they just despawn that guy, that works too. Um, they, they grab that box and then they just run under. And there's actually use in doing that because you want a box for the next squirrel. Uh, there's another squirrel coming up and you have two options on this squirrel. So I'd probably say the best way to do that is to learn how to grab that box like this um, because the other alternative is waste time because the other alternative is just going like that and then jumping over. But you want to grab that box and we have a box. Um, so there's two different things that you can do. So you can run under that squirrel, damage boost and then jump through. That's a very safe strat and it makes the rest of that screen pretty easy. Or because you're holding a box, you can do a very low jump like that and then an up throw. And then you can kill the squirrel that way without damage boosting, which is slightly faster. And I would say because if you're gonna learn this in like an optimal way and grab that box anyway, um, it's worth learning to kill that squirrel with that box because you're holding a box, you're not going out of your way to pick up a box or anything like that. So even though H is kind of like more of a complex screen, um, or one of the harder screens. Uh, H2 is actually really easy. It's probably one of the easier screens in the entire game, actually. So not much happens. It's worth noting that this guy right here has an awkward enemy placement. No matter what you do, no matter what kind of jump that you make, you have to stall in some degree. Otherwise, you'll always hit him. Um, so really easy way is you just make that jump, and then you go like... I always jump actually in the air, so I just jump like that. I pause, and then you jump over him. Any way that you want to waste a little bit of time, that's fine. But that's how you jump over that guy. Um, otherwise, he's just like perfectly lined up. Like no matter what that you can do, he'll, he'll always hit you. So you just have to waste a couple frames like that. So from here, um, there's another box grab. You jump and you grab that box. It's not worth going the bottom route. It's always 100% worth going the top route here because there's not really a way that you can go the bottom route like this without stopping a couple times and then coming back up here. So top route. Uh, we grab the box, we keep running. So from here, there's actually a jump that there is a buffer for that I started going for. Um, I tasked it out and I kind of understood it or whatever. But a lot of people go like this and then they jump and then they miss. There's actually a pretty big time loss if you miss this jump because it's entirely possible to jump from here onto here and then up here. Um, but if you miss like this jump, you lose like 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 or something. So it's actually a pretty considerable time loss. So the buffer that I started using was I jump as far as I can off this box, which makes me land as far as I can off this box. And as long as I jump again, I land on here. So it's virtually impossible to mess this up once you understand what you're doing. Um, in the past, I would very much try to like manually time this, but I, I figured out, okay, there's probably a buffer here. I have tried this literally like 50 times in a row or something like that. I've never once run off that ledge. So I feel it's a very safe buffer. 
Um, and it's a very safe way not to lose like a half a second on probably one of the easiest screens in the entire game. So from here, uh, you just keep running. You jump there. I guess you jump on this, this second last box or whatever to avoid these green guys. And you walk off that last box and you jump over again. So same thing here. Uh, a lot of people get hit at the very end of this screen, but it's not that hard to figure out. You just have to like run to like the very end of this platform, so it's like halfway off and then just jump off. And have faith, like that guy will always turn around right before he's about to hit you. But if you jump early, like if you jump like here or something, you'll get hit. So you really want to be like kind of like halfway off the ledge, or like just a little bit off the ledge with Chip, and he'll automatically always make that jump. So H, um, again, one of the harder screens, but it's it's really just the climb. Uh, but in general, it's not that hard. Um, so going into I, I is really weird too. Um, I is probably one of the hardest boss, well, I mean, the boss isn't that hard. But the screens themselves aren't that hard either. Like G, G and I back to back are kind of like some of the easier levels, I think, in the entire game. And Sinister had a, a really good strat, actually, that nobody currently goes for. So again, we hold right, we're falling. Um, from here, we want to jump up. So I guess from about there, from this coffee cup here, uh, we want to jump up to that corner of the box because that way we can jump up to the top part of this section um, without bumping or like hitting or anything like that. So we want to jump up like that and then jump over. So I always grab this box right here. Um, you can again grab boxes later on if you want. You just have to have a box kind of like in reserve because there's some pelicans coming up. It doesn't really matter where you grab the box from as long as you're grabbing it without wasting frames. So like, you know, like don't go like this and be like, oh shit, I need a box or something and go back and grab it. So from here, we just go like that, we jump over, and the pelicans are unique. So there is actually a pixel perfect jump on the pelicans if you feel like going for it. Uh, nobody does, it would save you about 0.1. Uh, but you can pixel perfect, like jump over the pelican without taking damage. Um, but it's much easier to jump into the pelican and obviously like boost off of him sideways. So jump into him, boost off of him, and then keep going. So Sinister has a strat, nobody actually goes for it. Um, he actually was telling me it's like something that they do in co-op with General Andreas. So from here, you want to walk off this fan as much as possible and let it push you. It's actually really weird because this hitbox on the tack below... Um, I don't know if you can do it with this, the way that I scrolled the screen now. But the hitbox on the tack below is like very forgiving. Yeah, I, don't, I think I scrolled the screen too far. But anyway, if you short jump this jump normally, that hitbox, you can actually land on it, on the tack. Whereas normally, like, if you even touch it, like, slightly, it hits you. But anyway, the point is, you want to jump uh, over the tack, ideally. But if you jump, I guess, in such a way, like, the screen's not scrolled over here, you can actually land on that tack, which is kind of like a hitbox anomaly. Um, but you'll land somewhere in the middle here. So we just want to jump up onto this ledge, jump up over here onto this box, and then jump over and clear that pelican. So not really a hard sequence of events. So in terms of the strat that Sinister had, normally people, uh, when they come to the pelicans or whatever, they have to jump and they have to aim the, the, the pelican, or they have to aim, sorry, the box at the pelican's feet. And if you jump and you aim at the pelican too high, it eats the box and it shoots it back. And picking up another box and then running back, obviously, is a huge waste of time. So the, actually, both pelicans, the way they're lined up, uh, Sinister had a strat where if you push A and B immediately, it automatically throws the box as soon as you jump. Like you just have to push A and B, and 100% of the time it will always hit on the proper frames, like right below the pelican's feet. Like it's impossible to undershoot that throw. So you can do that with both sets of pelicans as long as you're holding a box, and that makes that part 100% brainless. Not that it's really hard before. So. It's probably worth grabbing this box as your second box because it's hiding an acorn. And this is one of the times where, I guess health doesn't really matter, but you might as well pick up the health anyway. So yeah, literally just press A and B, uh, you'll automatically throw the box into the acorn, or into the pelican. And from here, there's, I guess, the easiest way to make this jump that I've always done was I literally just walk off this fan. Like you don't have to like jump off this fan or anything like that. 
And then when I get to about here, uh, I just jump over that pelican guy. So I just literally walk off the fan and jump. Pretty easy, pretty simple way. Um, when it comes to this screen, there's two ways to do it. I don't know which is better. Um, see, the way that a lot of people seem to do is they take this bottom route and then they jump up like this. So they literally go like that and then they jump up that way. But the problem that I have with that is sometimes like it feels like if I'm on this platform going down like here, sometimes it feels like I can get like stuck down here, like this part eats my jump or something like that. So I've never gone the bottom route, um, but I guess if you want to learn the bottom route, you jump, I guess before there, um, ideally, and then you jump up that way. And it manipulates that mouse to run to the right of you. So we want to jump up here and full jump or not full jump, and then come up that way. Full jump off here, and then jump up those two boxes and land up up here. The way that I learned it, it sends the mouse running in the opposite direction, is you jump up up here, and then on this box, you walk off slightly, like you have to walk off to the to the right, just like maybe halfway off the box, whatever. And then you full jump over that mouse, and then it sends them to the right. And then the exact same is here. You jump up, you full jump off that ledge or whatever, and you jump up twice. Um, so, the old tutorial uh, said that you should jump whatever into that box and then jump out. The smarter thing to do, actually, is just to walk into that box and then jump over. Because you'll never get stuck jumping into that box and then jumping out. You can just literally walk into that box, activate it, and then jump over that way. That's one of the easiest ways to kind of like grab zipper and then keep running. And then when it comes to this next upcoming section, the jumps are pretty straightforward. Uh, you just jump on top of these two things. You want to jump onto the tacks because you still have zipper, and then you jump over like that. It's pretty hard to slow that section down, but I'll do it a couple of times. So around this jump, you jump onto the tacks, and then you just jump over the tacks. Zipper kills the bees, zipper protects you. So in terms of the caterpillar, um, there is an audio cue that I use. It's kind of hard to explain RTA, but I have to turn up the TV volume slightly. So when you enter the boss fight, there's like that, kind of like those seven notes, whatever, like that, da 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 So, that one. So that's the one that you want to use. This is the only audio cue that I use in this game. Um, but why we want to use that one is because this caterpillar actually breaks apart if he gets to the middle part of the screen and he's taking damage. So if you wait for that one specific audio cue, all you have to do is grab this ball and then pick it up. Um, you, you jump and you hit the caterpillar like that. And then the second part is when he comes and he's like building his body back together. I made a terrible save state there. Um, when he's jumping and he's building his body back together, uh, you can you can basically one cycle him like that, or like 1.5 cycle, whatever you want to call him. So, the fastest way to do that caterpillar is like that. I uh, should probably reload that save state so it's not all messed up. But yeah, right there. So two, three. So the the big thing about learning this kill too is like jumping with the ball because you have to be like traveling with the ball to hit him. But once you figure out that part, it's actually not that bad. And I would say ideally like this third line, like this line right here, um, once you kind of get like really optimal with the kill, that's probably where you want the caterpillar to start dying. So you have a lot of frames to do that. So something like that. It's not super hard to learn that kill. It's just learning to understand not hitting the caterpillar like in the middle of the screen so it breaks apart like that. But definitely that audio cue helps. Okay, J. Hardest screen in the entire game, I think. Um, there's quite a few things that are really, really annoying about J. I would ironically consider the first part of J actually the easiest. Um, so, J itself, 
you actually save a little bit of frames if you bonk your head opposed to jumping down because uh, you wind up on that conveyor slightly earlier. So you can bonk your head like that and there's two things that people automatically do. They pick up that box and they kill that rhino. Um, so if you really want to kind of push yourself, it's only faster by about 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. So I tasked this one out a long time ago, and you can damage boost, but the damage boost has to be perfect on this Rhino, and it has to be perfect on this Rhino. Uh, but if you damage boost twice like that, and then jump over, you can grab these two acorns, and then you can leave the screen with full health. But this is super dangerous because you need three health for the next screen. So the safer way to do that, and you're only losing like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, is you kill this guy, um, and then you do the exact same thing. But this time we jump over the Rhino. You can again skip the acorns because you didn't take any damage or anything like that and we wind up at the end of the screen. There's actually a third thing that you can do, um, but technically nobody goes for an RTA because it's insane. So technically the fastest way that you'd be able to do this screen, uh, there's actually a frame perfect jump right here. It's I think like a 9 frame jump or an 8 frame jump, I think it's actually 8 frames. 9 frames you wind up here, 8 frames, or sorry 7 frames and lower you just die. Um, but there's a frame perfect jump where you can make that uh, from that conveyor to the other conveyor and then you can just damage boost twice like this and maintain full conveyor speed through the entire level and then again collect the two acorns on your way out. So technically that saves like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. Nobody goes for that because it's just insanity. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's just It hasn't happened yet. Um, so this is where there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, the really hard part about this is there's not really a good way, because there is actually a way that you can like frame perfect some of these weasels like that um, to reduce the lag, but the amount and how difficult it is, like it almost breaks even to just accept the lag, because as soon as you mess up like one of the frame perfect inputs and the lag happens, um, it's almost as fast as just running through the leg without messing up the input because you're on top. So I'd probably say the easiest way to learn this screen is even though it's bordering on somewhat RTA to get rid of some of the weasels, uh, is to just jump up here and you jump up here and then you run off here and then you jump on that corner of the box and you jump over that plunger because the, the weasel will always try to shoot you. So we just want to jump over that weasel and there is actually kind of like a difference here because when you're running through this screen a lot of people just jump down like this or sorry they go like this and then they jump down uh, this is actually one spot solo uh where spawning that star will create leg frames so it's smarter to jump off like this to avoid spawning that star because there's going to be a bunch of weasels and stuff on the screen uh and then just jump down this way or you can just drop down literally and you can avoid the weasel that way um, but this is like literally the only spot where like spawning a star, at least solo, creates leg frames. It actually does cost you a little bit of time. But how you want to get down there afterwards doesn't matter because you can drop down again through that weasel if you're comfortable with the drop down or you can just do like a really short hop to fall down here. Okay, this is like probably one of the most infamous or infamous, sorry, uh, tricks in the entire run. It's the axe boost. I think it's worth noting, like I actually just want to explain like the full out kind of like hard strat. So it came from stuck in a plate and I'm pretty sure Andy they had like optimizations on both of it. And there's multiple different ways you can set up. But the basic idea is when you grab this box, um, so I don't even know how I want to explain that. The way that I learned it is I grab a box like this and then I use it and I duck and then I go this way. So then I can line up everything like that, but it doesn't really matter. So the difference between me grabbing that box and like hiding in the box is kind of like that little buffer window. But the way that they do is they just come here and they wait and then they jump that way. The, the whole point though is like you have to wait slightly. You can't just immediately like jump into this axe and then make it because you'll never make this, this cycle right here. So you have to like artificially add a weight. I know Andy goes like this and he goes like this and he throws the box up. He goes like this or something and then he goes that way. Um, so however you want to wait for like those few frames, it doesn't really matter. But the idea is once you have a box and like once you've waited or whatever you're doing, 
is you really want to jump off kind of like this box right here as far left as possible before you're falling down. And you really need to make, like literally need to be right on that side because the idea would be hitting the axe like probably right here. You need to hit like the very corner of the top left axe and when you're turning around like there needs to be as little animation as possible um, that you see before you, you you see yourself getting hit or whatever so you want to like boost like I, I don't know how to do that rta without slow motion or anything but like that i can tell it's going to be good because i didn't see the chipmunk turning around in the air so if you see yourself turning around in the air like you probably have that little frames that you're probably going to fail it like i would say your window to do this is again very 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 tight um, but this is easily like one of the hardest strats in the entire game because even if you make it over there you have to like jump in such a way that you avoid that other axe. So the hardest part for me isn't the boost, like the boost is easy, it's that jump right there. Because you need to run on the conveyor slightly and then jump up and then over that, that second axe. So I always short jump that when I think about it. Because you really need that jump to be quick, which is the hardest part, I think, of the axe boost. Because if you don't do a, a quick jump there, then the by the time that you land, you'll get hit by the second axe. So basically, the idea is you have to like somehow buffer slightly there. Um, you wait slightly. I would say like the amount of time that you hide in the box and come out is basically the amount of time that you need to wait on the first axe. Jump off the very corner of the left side box, and then from here... Um, we want to literally wait for this axe to come down. Uh, I made a really weird save state there. And then we boost off this axe right here. So once we land, uh, we full jump. This is a really awkward save state as well. We full jump over that lizard and he'll always be throwing a hat. So from here, there's actually some weirdness that goes on. Um, the, the most optimal way to do this is you can, I, I've always jumped down, again, you can just like walk down because you can actually walk here, you're not going to fall in that pit. So whatever you're more comfortable with with the setup. But if you walk down, you have to jump and you have to grab this third box without um, kind of like stopping or anything like that. And once we grab that third box, we want to bring it over to specifically this line. So we want to jump here and we want to jump on this line and then throw that box. So we want to go like that and then let it go and then keep going left. So the way that that works is it actually despawns like the top left lizard um, and it also allows us to jump over this guy's hat which is I think in my opinion like the scariest jump in this entire game. Uh, but if you jump from about here, uh, you jump over, you'll land, you can jump up this way and then you can scroll up here. So if you actually watch like the top left corner of the screen, you'll literally see the lizard, it'll appear for like literally one frame and it'll disappear. Why it despawns like this, I have no idea, but that's the way that you get him to despawn. Because he appears up here and then he just disappears. But you have to go under like that, you have to throw the box like that, and then you have to jump like that, and then he just despawns. So once we get up to this section here, um, there's multiple different ways. There's actually a really cool strat by MagePie again that came not even like a week ago that I'll include. I don't know if it's fast yet because I didn't have like the time to task it or anything like that. Um, but the way that I've always done this section is I just fall off here. It lines you up perfectly with this box. So you literally just fall off and then you can go like that and you can get rid of these two boxes. But it's worth noting that jumping and grabbing and throwing the boxes is infinitely faster than just going like this and pushing up B because that point um, you're, you're, you have like that land animation or whatever, like that grounded animation. So you want to get rid of these as fast as possible. And the fastest way to do that is I just like land like that and then I go like that and I throw them. This box right here is one of the more annoying boxes in the entire game. It is entirely possible because you have one health here. Uh, if you absolutely do this as frame perfect as possible, you can jump and grab this box and not pick up that acorn. Um, so if you're like absolutely perfect like that, you see, uh, it is possible that you can just leave that acorn behind. And I've seen so many people go like this and like, oh shit, and then go back and they have to grab that acorn. So a really easy way that I started doing is just make this box grab actually sloppy. Um, if you like walk into this box, it, like you don't have to walk into it you know, for like 40 seconds or anything like that. But as long as you're bumping the box slightly, when you go and you pick it up, you'll always pick up that acorn. So 
uh, it's probably worth it in my mind to like slightly bump that box than to try to make that like frame perfectly because there's always a big time loss having to go back and grab that acorn. So the way that I did that was it's like okay, um, I just I bumped that box slightly and it gets rid of that problem. But in terms of mage pie strats, he had a really cool strat here. Uh, where if you jump and you grab this box, the hitbox for this switch thing uh, is actually lined up obviously with that one. So as long as you're kind of like over here and you spawn both, you can go backwards like that and you can hit both. I don't know if this is faster, but it is a very cool strat uh, that nobody technically goes for yet. And it's not too hard to like line up like that because you, you save a box throw, but at the same time, I don't know if you save time because you have to technically go backwards slightly like that. But I really like that strat. Um, otherwise, all you have to do is you have to grab here and then you, you jump and you throw that box right there. What's up, Liquify? I appreciate that, dude. I didn't think that we'd get through all of it, honestly, but we're pretty much done. So, I mean, that's, that's a good start. Um... Yeah, if that switch isn't flipped, the same thing. You just have to like up grab both of these boxes or whatever. You get rid of them. So you can keep one because you have to keep a box anyway. You might as well keep this one. Uh, you can up throw it or whatever. You can grab this box. I see people up throw both or whatever and then they grab this one. So it doesn't really matter. I guess technically the smarter thing would be to keep this one. But I mean, even if you're throwing it, you're not technically wasting frames, I guess, because you have to get rid of it anyway, and you can grab this box without wasting frames if you do it very perfectly. But either or, if you want to hold on to that box, whatever. Um, there is a safe strat here that I do want to mention because it's actually pretty useful. Uh, I don't know how well wide known it is or whatever, but I think it's pretty well known at this point. Um, <clears throat> so when you're doing this, you want to run off the conveyor and jump and damage boost off this weasel. So that's the first step. Once we get here, you want to throw that box like super far in advance, like probably at this line right here. And then you want to run with the conveyor because as that lizard spawns, it'll get killed. So from here, this is there's a couple things that we can talk about. So this particular line, like right here, uh, if you throw the box like slightly before and then you walk, it will one-shot that weasel. It's a frame-perfect thing where... like that. Um, I technically always go for that, like whether or not I hit it, it does save time if you hit it, but it's obviously frame perfect. So Mage Pie has a really good setup, but the scroll of the screen uh, changes like the frame that the weasel dies on. So there's not really a great consistent way to set that up other than, okay, just throw it from that box. So if you end up throwing this box and you're not saving a couple frames, uh, there's two things you can do. So first of all, if you're throwing this box for the frame perfect and it doesn't work, uh, you can kill the weasel by throwing the second box and you can also jump over the plunger in this corner because the plunger will always come out, you can always jump over on that section. So you can jump over that way. When you're first learning this, like this loses frames, like literally frames, it's not that big of a loss at all. But jumping over that plunger uh, saves, I think, uh, well, I mean like it, it doesn't save anything, sorry, it loses some frames. But the upside to jumping over that plunger is the very end jump in this entire thing, if you die, you'll literally lose like probably close to like a full minute or more. There's there's a really odd, like kind of like awkward placed lizard. Uh, he's like right in front of the door. And if you die to that lizard, you'll lose a lot of time. Okay, so when it comes to this final section, again, you have a couple of options. Um, so I've seen a lot of people run with the box. They, they throw it and they kill this lizard, but then they jump up and they go back down. But the problem with that is it creates lag. So there's actually a lot of lag on that drop down, which makes that lizard drop, in my opinion, very scary. So there was a strat originally that I came up with that completely eliminated the lag. And then I think there's always been a strat that I've never really gone for because I didn't really like the forward box movement, but I'm assuming the forward box is probably faster. But if you jump up here and pause slightly, uh, don't hide in the box. Dude, don't hide in the box. But you pause slightly, uh, it reduces the lag like completely. So you see how that drop down is like much cleaner. So you just go like that. Uh, I guess you can make that jump without pausing. I don't know how frame perfect or tight that is. Cause I know that's actually a very tight jump. I didn't know that you could do that. But pausing makes that slightly more consistent for sure. 
uh, I, would, I would definitely pause and then jump and throw that box. But yeah, dropping down becomes a lot more consistent if you do that. The alternative that I did was I dropped down this way and I killed that lizard, and then I upbeat that guy, and then I jumped up and I came back down. And that way I was able to again reduce the, the lag on that lizard, and with really good kind of like drop downs or whatever, you can make that basically um, perfect. So like you can just spend no time up there whatsoever, and it also makes again that drop down a lot more consistent, so that way you're not lagging or anything like that. At the absolute worst, if you feel on the drop down that, you know, like let's say for example, you go like this and the drop down you feel is really slow like that, you can jump over that lizard. Um, it's just the hat that you have to watch out for. So just know that your options are literally, like if you feel the drop down is poor, you can just jump like that. Or if you really want to be a chicken to begin with, you can jump into the lizard uh, and avoid it like that as well because both times you're losing a little bit of time. But that's why if you save that extra health from the previous screen before, um, it makes that section a lot better. You know, like once you understand that lizard, it's kind of like a second nature thing, so it's not that bad. Um, yeah, I would say those are your options originally. If you don't do one of those like two strats if you feel like you need to bail, you can jump around that way, or you can just go like that and then jump down. So last part is Fat Cat. Uh, Fat Cat is really easy. Um, at least in the, the demo mode RNG because all you have to do is run in, throw it face left, and you actually want to jump as fast as possible on the second throw specifically, and then you up throw. Because if you wait, watch how awkward it gets with dodging the ashes. Like you see how I have to like immediately be like half jump height. Um, so if you really be brave on like that second throw and you jump as high as possible, it lines up all these other throws really really nice. You can actually jump higher than that ash kind of like threshold line. Um, but it's worth noting like all you have to do is like literally face like two pixels left But this is where it's kind of awkward with Fat Cat because his safe zone and his hitbox or whatever is like two pixels over, right? But if you literally go let's say like three pixels you see that like it misses So a lot of people are like well why can't I hit him and like jumping like this or whatever So it is actually like fairly precise but at the same time it's not that bad Like as long as the ball is in that range on the first throw like you could probably kill him pretty easy so you just have to really make sure that you don't go like this and then go like really far left or something and throw it. But yeah. Really be brave on that second throw and then you can jump really high and you can kill Fat Cat that way. But that's it. Um, as I said, I'll, I'll edit in kind of like better spaceship and robot kills and better explanations there, but... You know, I would say this is very much sub-10 strats. Um, very much if you want to learn it in that way. I'd probably guess like with the tutorial, the old Kavik tutorial, if you followed it like completely, you'd probably be able to get like a 10, 20 or something like that. So there's a pretty big difference between that tutorial and this one. But part of that too is also RNG, so. Actually one thing that I think is funny that I'll just explain really quickly is after Fat Cat is dead, there's so many PVs that are like this, right? They're like, ah, yeah, and they like hit the split button. <clears throat> and then this text comes up, right? This text does not scroll automatically. So a lot of people's PVs just end here. <laughs> it's like, this is technically not the ending. So like if you actually mash A, there's a little bit more text to go through. But I've always found that kind of funny when I was like learning runs and like checking other people's runs, it's like, this, this actual part where they're like scrolling through and it says the end, like nobody's PB has that in there. So remember to mash A, I guess. I think actually it even goes one more because it changes the, the music. Yeah, so you have to, see, remember to mash A. <laughs> it doesn't end there, dude. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is she wrote. But as I said, I'll clean up some of that in post, uh, and then I'll upload it to YouTube, so I'll link it later. Hopefully that helps people learn this. This is a really cool game. Um, oh, thanks. That was great. Thanks, Ghostunk. I appreciate that, man. I'm glad that you were lurking and you enjoyed it. I want to make one for Batman in the next couple of days, but I chose the easy way out. 
Chip and Dale is a lot easier to explain than Batman. Batman's gonna be kind of... Oh boy, <laughs> that's gonna be an experience.